The rookie tandem of Pods and TJD is proving GM Mike Dunleavy picked two draft robberies in 2023 that are dangerous. The dubs are both 5-1 since Steph kicked the chair in Phoenix, plus with Jonathan Kaminga and Brandon Pajemski in the starting five. The Splash Brothers meshing for 55, Loondog and Moody bouncing back, Sarich providing typically productive minutes, and CP3's unreal assist-to-turnover ratio have also been prevalent factors to the Warriors building up a five-game winning streak, propelling them over 500 for the first time since November 12th. How the Warriors' first-year phenoms are blossoming along with the narratives they're changing, Klay Thompson capturing mid-season form, Stephen Curry's clutch obliteration on the season as a whole, and more are on their way. But according to YouTube's analytics, just 11.6% of you are subscribed, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for your support of my channel. So, Pods nearly recorded his first triple-double in Golden State's eighth consecutive victory at home. You can't forget this kid leads the Warriors in plus-minus, with one of the reasons for that being that he's fourth among all players in total charges drawn. Insane for a first-year guy. Pojemski's playing the role of Golden State's connector offensively, with Wise beyond his year's playmaking wherewithal. Then is also leading the Dubs' defense by being able to guard multiple positions while bringing elite pursuit of the basketball. Against the Wiz, two-way pods held his matchup to 30% shooting from the field, 0% shooting from distance, plus forced two turnovers. Take in how Paws looks up the court with his vision while using two push-ahead dribbles before weaving a step-into-it overhead bouncing bullet through Henderson and Theibel to Jackson Davis. As I've been telling you and as you've been agreeing with in the comments section all season, these rooks can ball. Next to that first-year connection, one of the plays of the night was initiated out of this kick-and-relocate action with Curry and Looney, where after Kavon's handoff, he sets a monster big body to free up Steph before receiving it on the roll off a Curry hockey assist and lobbing it to Kaminga in the dunker spot. Another showstopper against Portland featured Steph isolating after an up fake and jab on the catch by pulling off a definitively shifting momentum cross left, followed by an instantaneous cross back right, freezing Grant to open up the lane. Just insane. Shifting to a breakdown of the dub's other draft robbery in TJD, and since my last video covering his key performance in an OT win over Boston, Trace dropped four dunks in the first half alone in the Warriors' next game against Washington amidst posting another double-double. He would follow that up against Portland the night later by posting a season's second-most 13 points. Pondering why Trace Jackson Davis wasn't higher rated by professional draft scouts coming out of college is on the surface confusing. However, the long-time narrative that drafting a younger player out of college at all costs as opposed to taking four-year college players like Trace has become a famously twisted theory that every NBA GM fell for in 2023. That's single-handedly proven by such a talent like TJD being available until nearly the end of this year's draft. For those who haven't been watching, Trace is proving himself as a well-rounded, defensive-minded phenom up front, with the capability to block shots around the rim at will, make high IQ plays offensively, and finish with the best of them around the rim with his length, springiness, and motor. Have an average 20-plus points, 10-plus rebounds, and just under 3 blocks at the college level in the uber-competitive Big Ten Conference, Anyone with that type of resume, plus of course the by the eye test athletic prowess, should be a top 10 to 20 pick at the very least. It turns out, Trace is quite possibly the second best player in the 2023 draft, behind potentially right on par with Victor Wembanyama. Therefore, the fact that he was passed on 56 times in the draft, I think signals a problem with modern day basketball scouting at the professional level. How could such an effective screen setter with such a high point slash rebounding average in his senior year fall so damn low? First of all, you can't forget Golden State, in addition to CP3, received the 57th overall pick in 2023's draft in the Jordan Poole trade. According to Anthony Slater of The Athletic, teams were only willing to draft Jackson Davis under the confines of a two-way deal, with Mike Dunleavy and the Dubs being the only team willing to offer him a full-time contract. Trace has proven the association wrong and the Dubs right. 
before the Portland matchup, TJD's consecutive double-doubles with more than 12 rebounds on 70% shooting coincidentally made him the first player to do that off the bench since his father, Dale Davis, in 2001. Trace also joined the first overall pick in 2023 being Wemby and the second overall pick in 2022 being Chet as the only rookies this season to have posted consecutive double-doubles. Davis' showing against the Wiz also made him the first Golden State rookie since Stephen Curry in 2009 to post consecutive double-doubles. Displaying prominence on both ends, in this sequence you see him thrive as a backside drop coverage defender by cutting off the inside look to Muscala. He then bursts back onto Shamit for the block, controls that swat off the glass, before on the other end initiating a pick and roll action with CP3 by setting a pick on Jones and flying down the lane to complete the lob. Beastly bit of trace action. Over the last four outings in 22 minutes on average, Trace is averaging a beyond solid 11.8 points, 10.3 rebounds, and 1.3 blocks per game. Now having won 8 games in a row at home after sweeping the Washington-Portland back-to-back, -back, while those are teams the Warriors should take care of, it speaks volumes to the flow Golden State's established that they won said outings by a hefty combined 31. One of the driving factors to that success has been Clay Thompson, who led the Dubs in scoring against Portland with 28. But over his last 5, KT's posted a stretch of averaging 27 points on an unheard of 50-50-100 shooting split, equating to a 71% true shooting mark. The 13-year vet knows exactly how to break out of a cold spell, and he's done it right when the dubs needed him to. Stop saying the man should be traded or that he's washed, and start embracing the ups and downs his scoring repertoire comes along with, trusting that Thompson is an all-time timely performer. On that note, no one's been more timely of a bucket getter this season, then Ward dealt Stephen Curry the second out of Davidson. Steph, albeit the seventh pick in 2009, fairly high, was a draft robbery as well, given Minnesota chose two point guards over him in the top six. What the future first ballot Hall of Famer has done when games get close under pressure has been bewildering in 23-24. Steph ranks number one across the association in all of clutch points, clutch threes, overtime points, overtime threes, and fourth quarter threes. More miraculously, Curry's also number one in clutch field goal attempts, while also being number one in shooting percentage among the top eight in that category. In other news, Chris Paul's posted nine assists per game to just one and a half turnovers per game over eight showings throughout the month of December, which has been an overlooked blessing for this team. Additionally, Dario Saric has proven he can play next to Trace up front off the bench, and that tandem is one coach Steve Kerr can feel comfortable with. Looney grabbed his highest rebound total in 14 games at 11, and for the second night in a row, it looked like Kavon was more engaged in terms of his screen setting and being in the right spot defensively. So, Looney seemingly reaching near top-notch physical condition and proving haters wrong over the past couple outings could be a good sign. Overall, Mike Dunleavy has been just as good of a rookie GM as Trace and Brandon have been rookie players, Shout out to owner Joe Lacob for making such a solid hire in the aftermath of Bob Myers. Dunleavy picked a couple players in Pods and TJD who were built for the pressure that playing in the Warriors evolved market comes along with. Not only that, but their persona and playing styles were a perfect fit for the culture and on-court continuity. What's the most dangerous part for opponents about the Dubs draft robberies in your opinion though? Best answer down below gets a shout out next video and gets a chance to win free NBA merch by the end of this year. Today's shout out goes to Christian Moore who gives his take on why TJD is the biggest steal on the Dubs. Great take right there. Appreciate every answer. DFlow signing off.